Um, and like I said earlier, English is the language of instruction, except if it's a modern language course. Um, if you want to take Spanish, um, so if you have a minor in another language or a major, um, it's a great way to take a course outside of English. So semester-long programs, um, in addition to ESU faculty-led programs, we offer obviously the semester-long programs. This is where you would go through ISEP. Um, we also have two other programs, um, third party, that we use, CIS and SAI. CIS is a um, Center for International Studies and, sorry I blanked out there, and SAI is Study Abroad Italy, but they also, they started in Italy and it's throughout Europe at this time, but primarily most students use ISEP. So, and then we also have global partners. And again, over 160 universities that you could apply to for your exchange. So why do we want to study abroad? It's a life-changing experience. Um, I started traveling domestically at a young age, um, and I've been to, I believe, 47 states. But I really didn't start going abroad into my mid-20s, I would say. And I felt the U.S. has a great mixture of culture. Um, but leaving the country, um, I certainly got that travel bug. And I hope you will do the same if you go on one of these trips or one of these programs, I should say. Um, every time I go to a different country right now, um, I believe I've visited, I'm, I'm in the low 30s right now, 30 some countries I've been to. Um, every one of them that I visit, life changing experience. Um, just being exposed to different cultures, different languages. Um, it just gives you such a worldly view. Um, and I just hope you take advantage of it here at ESU. The older you get, um, the more difficult it is to travel. Once you get a nine to five job, family, etc., And it gets much more expensive to travel. Many times there's scholarships or the office of the provost is very supportive and she tries to give a stipend for each student that studies abroad, even for faculty-led. So going with a group, it certainly keeps the cost down. So take advantage of it while you can. The older you get, much more difficult to travel. Um, like I said earlier, fortunately I have a position where I still get to travel. Um, Experience culture and culturally relevant learning. Um, again, it depends on what you're looking for. Your major certainly plays, is very influential in maybe the study abroad program that you pursue or the study abroad, if you went for a semester, which university you may choose. So, um, like I said, you have a well-rounded view of the world. You become a global citizen um, instead of I was guilty of this and still am, that to have tunnel vision. Um, you just think of your area or maybe the US, but once you get outside, you start realizing that these cultures, I don't wanna say anything negative about US citizens, but oftentimes we do have tunnel vision um, and we don't think globally. Um, I believe Becoming a global citizen not only helps you as a person, but your emotional intelligence, I think, improves. Um, you become a better communicator. There's just so many advantages to traveling. Um, food, obviously. Um, if you're a foodie, traveling's got, got to be great. Um, I'm willing to try almost anything, so wherever I go, I want to try the traditional food, I want to get involved with the community outside the tourist area. 
I feel like that's where you're gonna find the authentic, like maybe food, authentic culture. Um, and I think that's a great way. Great way to meet people is over food and get to know people, um, especially from a different culture and from a different country. Um, this quote, um, I wrote a few years ago for a paper and it just stuck with me. Um, Today's global community challenged each of us to engage people and cultures we may not fully understand. The more we travel, the more likely we are to connect local issues to global ones. And the more culturally aware we become in an increasingly interdependent world. Um, I just think that sums it up. Um, the way the world is going right now, I think we certainly need empathy and to understand other cultures. So this is a great stepping stone towards that. And to clear all your doubts, um, when, I am, when I am with a group of students, I typically ask them, what do you think is the number one hurdle for study abroad? So obviously the answer I get back from students is typically money. It's a fiscal issue. Can they financially afford to go? Um, I'm here to tell you, you certainly can. This opportunity is, anyone at ESU could take advantage of this opportunity. So it may be less expensive to study abroad for a semester than living on campus. You may be saving money. So I typically ask the students who are living in the suites. Hemlock, Hawthorne, Sycamore. Um, and if they say, oh, I'm living in the suites, it's actually less expensive to go abroad for a semester than it is to live on the, in the suites on campus. Um, everything is funneled through ESU. So if you wanna study abroad, your financial aid on paper, you are still an ESU student. So you'd be charged ESU tuition, You'd be charged a meal plan at ESU, and you'd be charged housing at ESU. So when you go abroad, your housing's already taken care of, your food, your meal plan's already been taken care of, and your tuition's already been taken care of. So the only thing you're really paying for is your flight, your spending money, and there's a small fee to ISEP that I'll go over later. Um, so as you can see, you pay tuition, housing, and meals to ESU, so you don't have to pay for them while abroad for the semester. You can still use your financial aid and scholarship. So again, on paper, you're an ESU student, so any scholarships you received are applicable to your study abroad program. So it's, certain ad it's certainly advantageous for you as a student to try to do at least one semester abroad. Um, if you feel you can't afford it, come talk to me, I'll work with you or the financial aid office. Um, we'll try to make it happen. Um, and living costs can be lower than in the US. Um, I like to use an example of two students who went to China for a semester a few years ago. Um, they went to a global partner rather than going to ISEP and it was very inexpensive for them. They paid their tuition here, but when they arrived in China, food in China is very inexpensive. So they were paying for a meal, the equivalent to maybe a dollar fifty or two dollars American dollars, rather than paying for a meal plan here um, that could be substituted over there. They just paid out of their pocket and it was much less expensive. Same thing with housing, rather than paying for the residence halls here, they paid I believe they, how it works in China, sometimes they go to apartments that are part of the residence halls and they lived in these apartments, but it was significantly cheaper to stay in China and pay monthly than pay for the semester here at a residence hall. So you could certainly save money by actually going abroad. Living costs can be lower. Also, language, um, that's usually the second hurdle when I say why don't students study abroad. If 
first is usually money. It's a fiscal issue. The second, they say, well, I'm, I'm monolingual. I only speak English. Whenever you go abroad at any of these institutions, all the courses are in English. Um, they have it set up that way. So you don't have to speak English to study abroad. There are many courses in English for you to choose. Um, and you also could go to an English speaking country if you choose. Um, to be honest, that is probably the most competitive, the UK and Australia to get into, um, obviously, because they're English speaking. Um, the fear of the unknown. In my opinion, if you haven't traveled outside the country, you should start with a faculty led trip. Again, I keep saying trip, but a faculty led program. Um, you can start with a faculty led program and get a taste of traveling abroad with your professor and classmates and then look into a semester abroad. It's just a way to kind of get your feet wet, um, to see if traveling's for you. Um, you kind of get to understand any issues maybe you have going in and out of a country at the borders, um, issues at the airport, um, just overcoming those fears. So I strongly suggest going on a faculty-led program prior to studying abroad for a semester. And then life's beauty lies in its uncertainty. Um, whenever I travel, I like to have a loose schedule but you have to leave some time open for, to explore. Um, I don't want it so rigid that I don't enjoy it. I like the uncertainty of not knowing exactly what I'm gonna do on a certain night, or you might meet people and they give you suggestions. So again, the uncertainty is, makes me anxious, but in a great way. So I hope you get that same feeling. Um, a nervousness, but excited at the same time. And I just thought I'd put some pictures from previous programs. Um, this was in Costa Rica with a group of HRTM students, Hotel, Restaurant, Tourism Management. Um, that's why we're at a nice pool and we're at a nice resort, because it was part of um, the hotel, restaurant, tourism management um, program. So in this other picture is actually in Spain um, from last summer. So just a few pictures. Um, we try to bring the ESU warrior flag and show where we've been. And this is just my contact information. Again, I had the opportunity to go to the Great Wall. Some pictures of Great Wall, and this is myself sitting at Chairman Mao in China. Um, this is his desk that he, when he went to grade school, where he sat. We had the opportunity to visit, and we had to sit in the same seat as General Mao. I'm sorry, Chairman Mao. Um, so, if you have any questions, again, I'm Steve Ives. I'm the director. I'm in Stroud 103, um, the Office of International Programs. My email is sives at esu.edu, and the phone is 570-422-3527. Um, so right now, I'll just go over a few things um, where you can find the study abroad programs, um, and then also, depending on time, We'll, I'll go over um, ICEP with you, how to navigate the websites. And if we have time, I will briefly go over um, just the application so you have an idea of what you have to do to study abroad for a semester. So 